Hurricane Georges raked the Florida Keys for more than 24 hours and now is headed for another landfall somewhere along the Gulf Coast. For the first time in recorded history, forecasters are following four hurricanes in the Atlantic, but only Georges threatens the U.S. Welcome to Weather Center. I'm Janetta Jones. Millions of nervous eyes are looking to the Gulf of Mexico this evening. Hurricane warnings are up for a four-state area. Jill Brown is standing by in the forecast center now with the latest on George. Okay, thanks, Jenna. We've seen some of the dam damage that Hurricane George has done to areas that has hit in the past. We have one more stop, and it looks like that will be more than 24 hours away. And we'll be checking on conditions along the Gulf Coast in just a moment. Let me show you the satellite picture, and you can see where George is right now. Still bringing some rain and even thunderstorms into Florida. No strong winds there at this time. The first bands of thunderstorms are starting to come in toward the Florida Panhandle, where hurricane watches and warnings are up. Let's show you where those are. And folks in this area, you should be taking action at this time. It is a hurricane watch and tropical storm warning from Panama City to St. Mark's, a hurricane watch from Intercoastal City to Morgan City. But it's folks in this area where the red is. If you have a hurricane warning for your area, you may need to evacuate. Certainly, you'll need to take some kind of precautions. Get your supplies together. Get your house ready for the uh, possible hurricane force winds by probably tomorrow fairly early in the day, but a hurricane warning means that hurricane conditions are expected within the next 24 hours. Joining me now to talk about Hurricane George is Stu Ostro, meteorology supervisor here at the Weather Channel. And what do you think folks in this area should be doing this evening? The bottom line is to follow the recommendations of the emergency management officials. We know that evacuation is a hassle it can even be more of a hassle you might have saved up all year for the vacation at the beach mm -hmm. or uh, if you're a business owner it may even involve a financial hit but we're talking about potentially a matter of life or death here these decisions to order evacuations are not taken lightly they're done for a reason and it's getting to the point where it's getting a critical time if folks haven't boarded up the windows tonight tomorrow morning the winds may be so strong that that'll be difficult to do yeah this hurricane has a large wind field and we've even seen some gusts bordering on tropical storm force on the Florida Panhandle where the outermost squalls have come. All right, let's take a look at the latest stats on Hurricane George. This is as of the 4 o'clock update from the Hurricane Center. It's centered at 26.6 north, 86.2 west. That's 335 miles southeast of New Orleans, Louisiana. Winds have increased a little bit today, 110 miles per hour sustained now. It's moving to the northwest at 10 miles per hour. The pressure has dropped, 968 millibars is the latest. And uh, Stu, we've seen some strengthening here, and this is fairly significant. Yeah, this pressure of 968 millibars is a change from 975, which is what it was previously. And it was close to 975 uh, pretty much all night and all day. We'll be anxiously, anxiously awaiting the next Hurricane Hunter report, which will be this evening, to see whether that is just a little blip or whether it really is a trend. All right, taking a look at the visible satellite picture, and the sun is about to set on this one, so we won't be able to see it for much longer. But what kind of things can you see in this? Well, we see a couple of things. Uh, one, the large nature of this hurricane's uh, circulation, some of these clouds moving pretty briskly at well away from the center of circulation. Also at the start here, right here, we didn't see very many deep clouds west of the eye. Now we see that. That's a, a continuing sign or another sign of the growing organization. The eye is still a little tough to see on this particular set of images, but the hurricane hunters did find that the eye was pretty well organized. And I see you have a report of a uh, tornado there. That's another thing in these outer squalls here. Some of those cells can produce either very strong, brief, straight line winds or even a quick spin up of a tornado. Okay, and this is just in as a 456 or tornado was spotted 25 miles northeast of Destin, moving to the west. And that's, again, another indication that folks should have completed all their preparation because you may need to take cover now as those first lines of thunderstorms do come in. Our strike probability map gives you an indication of the area most prone to seeing the eye of the hurricane go over and even areas a little bit farther out, like in the Florida Panhandle, Stu, they should not be taking this lightly. Right, both because it does have that large wind field and because over the last hour or two it might have wobbled a little bit more north-northwest or northwest than west-northwest. That may be temporary, but it's just a sign that until we know exactly where it's going, people anywhere within the warning area need to take it seriously. Okay, and how so it'll be later this evening before we really have an indication of if it's made a turn or if it was a, a momentary mobble. Uh, wobble. <laughs> <laughs> Wobbler bobble, yeah, we should have a better idea. 
Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the latest radar. And again, we'll be able to see those lines of thunderstorms coming in. There's no watch in effect yet, but we may see a tornado watch issued for the Florida Panhandle later this evening. This is time to worry about severe weather, hurricane force winds. That'll be tomorrow. Uh, yeah, as we go through the day Sunday, conditions will deteriorate. And then if uh, it follows its forecast track, on into the latter part of the day, Sunday and Sunday night, things will go downhill very rapidly. And here's a look at the wind field. You can see the, the hurricane force winds do extend out about 200 miles from the center of, or make that 115 miles, tropical storm force winds another 200 miles out. So it may be a while before the winds really pick up. But uh, as you can see here, uh, folks up the line from this hurricane, uh, you should be making your preparations. Let's take a quick look at the track and you'll be able to tell uh, when we might start to see the effects of the hurricane. And again, this is the uh, National Hurricane Center's best guess, which is heading in this direction, somewhere in the middle of the cone, with some increase in intensity uh, and perhaps some slowing at the last minute, which could also cause a significant threat from heavy rainfall and rainfall-induced flooding in addition to the storm surge. Okay, a lot of aspects of this storm. Let's take you down to Key West and show you what uh, Hurricane George did there. Hurricane George smashed the Florida Keys, leaving behind a big cleanup job. People ventured out today getting their first look at the destruction. It will take a while to tally up the damage here, but the good news is there were no fatalities reported in the Keys, and if folks prepare properly along the Gulf Coast, we hope we'll be able to say that again with the next landfall of Hurricane George. Thanks very much, Stu Ostro. We'll continue to keep you updated on Hurricane George, as well as the forecast for Sunday. As a matter of fact, Janetta Jones is in the studio, and she'll be telling you about that right now. And this weather center is sponsored by Subaru. High pressure in control for most of the eastern seaboard. However, we have an area of low pressure that is kicking on through the Great Lakes, and that's going to be giving way to some strong thunderstorms potentially some very dangerous thunderstorms that could contain lightning and wind and maybe even tornadoes. Why? Because we've got that frontal boundary separating the cooler, drier air from the warm, moist air moving in out of the Gulf of Mexico. So that's setting up the clash zone for the conditions that are favorable for strong thunderstorms and maybe even severe weather. This tornado watch is in effect until 10 o'clock local time. That means that you need to be prepared to seek shelter immediately. Have your plan of action in place before that warning comes out for your vicinity. Know what kind of uh, place you're going to head to, maybe the lowest level of your home or business. Make sure if it's not a basement that you're in the interior room. Maybe. The interior. Hurricane George raked the Florida Keys for more than 24 hours and now is headed for another landfall somewhere along the Gulf Coast. For the first time in recorded history, forecasters are following four hurricanes in the Atlantic, but only George threatens the U.S. Welcome to Weather Center, I'm Dan Atkinson. Millions of nervous eyes are looking to the Gulf of Mexico this evening. Hurricane warnings are up for a four-state area. Jill Brown is standing by in the forecast center now with the latest on George. Jill. All right, thanks, Dan. We saw what Hurricane George did to Key West. Now it looks like it may be a more serious situation as it makes its way toward the northern Gulf Coast. Take a look at the satellite picture and you'll see a strengthening Hurricane George continuing to move off to the northwest. Hurricane watches and warnings are up here, and if you are in a warning area, you should be taking this one very seriously. Prepare for possible evacuation. If they've ordered evacuations in your area, we hope that you will heed those warnings and take this opportunity to get out while you can. Contact a person outside your area, report your plans so they'll know that you're safe and where you are. Collect your disaster supplies kit, and now is the time you may need to be doing that and moving out of the northern Gulf Coast. Here to talk about Hurricane George with me is Stu Ostro, meteorology supervisor here at the Weather Channel. And Stu, at this point, um, it's getting to the point where it's going to get late. The winds will start picking up. People should really be hurrying to complete these activities. They should. The weather has been very nice today in southeastern Louisiana, southern Mississippi, southern Alabama. The hurricane may not seem real at this point. Mm -hmm. Well, the hurricane is real. It's dangerous and it poses a very serious threat. All right, we have seen some strengthening today. We can show you the latest watches and warnings first off, and you'll notice here that in the area from Pensacola to Morgan City, we still have hurricane warnings that are in effect. That has not changed. If we see any kind of a change in the uh, motion of this hurricane, then the Hurricane Center will change some watches to warnings potentially. So keep that in mind if you're in a hurricane watch area from Panama City to St. Mark's 
or this hurricane watch area from Intercoastal City to Morgan City. And here's the latest stats on Hurricane George as of the 4 o'clock update from the Hurricane Center. Again, winds are 110 miles per hour sustained. There will be higher gusts. This may increase. It is now moving to the northwest at 10 miles per hour. We saw a significant change in the pressure this afternoon. It is now 968 millibars. And here's the satellite picture, Stu. Again, we're watching uh, the track of this heading up. It looks like at this point, the forecast would take it in closest to New Orleans. Right. The uh, National Hurricane Center's uh, official forecast track, as well as most of the uh, computer forecast guidance that uh, meteorologists look at, heads it in that direction. And that would be a continuation of the track it's had for many, many days. What we'll be watching closely this evening is to see whether a slight northward or north-northwestward jog it took late this afternoon continues or not. That is a, a good reason why everybody in the hurricane watcher warning area needs to be very prepared. Uh, another good reason is that the uh, wind field extends out a good distance from the center, so do the battering waves. So uh, hurricane, not just a point, it has a wide sphere of influence. And also, if it, just for the sake of argument, were to continue more of a north-northwest movement rather than a west-northwest, it would be a little, the center of circulation and the strong winds would be closer to the coast, so it would take less time for an impact to occur. And actually in the Florida Panhandle this evening, we've already seen a few of those outer squall bands. Okay, and that is what happened with Hurricane Aaron. And so it is critical through the next several hours this evening that you keep getting the information because if anything changes, you may need to know about those changes very quickly. So again, on the satellite picture, you can see the outer bands just now coming into the Florida Panhandle. We've seen some severe weather there. We have two crews standing by. We have Jim Cantori that's been down in the Biloxi area through this afternoon. Also, Kristen Dodd in Pensacola. And Kristen, you did have some strong thunderstorms go through earlier. It looks like a, a rainy evening there at this point. That's exactly what it's going to be setting up to be here on Pensacola Beach. Earlier, just about an hour ago, we had hundreds of folks out here having a good time. They'd already boarded up their homes. They had come out to take a look at some of the waves and plenty of sunshine. But as soon as that hurricane began to strengthen and the latest coordinates were announced, everyone became a little bit more somber and headed in and put the final preparations on their homes. Now behind me, you can see some of the activity that's taking place here with incessant waves continuing continuing to bite along the beaches. We are seeing some of the beaches now being begin to pull away, some erosion taking place, and they continue to be quite high waves. We also have seen uh, some very gusty winds here, as well as tropical downpours, just the start of things to come here at Pensacola Beach. Now, just to the west of me is Jim Cantori in Biloxi. Jim, what's the latest from there? Well, Kristen, unlike where you are in Pensacola, we do not have mandatory evacuations here. All they do is require that you leave. They ask you to, to leave, and, and that's probably a pretty good idea looking at the uh, latest forecast track from this thing. And as you know, folks, uh, this is Camille country. As we go back to 1969, the worst uh, hurricane to ever come in to the United States. And you can see here on a Saturday, which would normally be a day with thousands of people on the beaches, we have nobody and that's because they've cleared out the beaches. Now you'll notice that we do not have half the waves. We don't have a third of the waves that Kristen has uh, over in Pensacola Beach because there are barrier islands, several of them offshore of the Mississippi coast, and that really helps to take the big punch out of the, uh, out of the waves as they come in. But obviously as winds pick up, we will see some wave action. I spoke with uh, the public information officer, and they do tell me that businesses must be closed by eight o'clock tonight on the beach side of US 90, which is exactly where we are here. And there have been lots of calls from, this is surprising to me, lots of calls from people who have moved down from the north that don't exactly know what to expect. And tune in in one half hour because I will give you a phone number, if you're watching us, that you can call to get the information that you need to evacuate and, of course, the shelters that you need to head into. But, uh, again, a word of the wise here is we're batting down the hatches in Biloxi, and we will uh, definitely keep you posted as conditions worsen, perhaps overnight, and into tomorrow morning. Back to you, Jill. Okay, thanks, Jim Cantori, there in quiet Biloxi, Mississippi. Taking a look at the latest radar, you'll notice that in parts of Florida, we are seeing some showers and thunderstorms and even some severe weather. But that is gone from the Key West area, where it is quieter today. In Key West, of course, they're assessing the damage at this point. We can show you some scenes from Key West and what they did encounter there yesterday uh, afternoon. Hurricane George smashed the Florida Keys, leaving behind a big cleanup job. People ventured out today getting their first look at the destruction. It will take a while to tally up the damage here, but the good news is there were no fatalities reported in the Keys, and we're hoping that that will be the case 
again as Hurricane George makes its next landfall. We do have one tornado warning, and that's in Okaloosa County right in here. We expect to see more of that through this evening. What else can folks expect, Stu? Well, I think uh, that's an important point. A lot of folks who might be new to the area have never experienced a hurricane, certainly not a major hurricane, and even residents who live there, a category three or higher hurricane on the Saffir Simpson scale, which this may end up being, is not something one experiences the direct effects of very often. So again, it doesn't seem very real. This can cause a lot of problems and people need to follow the instructions of emergency management officials. Okay, and this is one we may be dealing with for a few more days to come. It's expected to move slowly and will be a big rain producer well after it makes landfall, we do believe. All right, thanks to Austria, we'll be keeping It's a nervous night in New Orleans as Hurricane George churns in the Gulf of Mexico. People getting ready in the city where flooding could be a major disaster. We're looking at an increasingly serious situation for the central Gulf Coast this weekend. Welcome to this edition of Weather Center. I'm Paul Emick. Let's now go to Sharon Mazoltan. She's in the forecast center for the very latest. Sharon. Well, thank you very much. Indeed, all eyes are on George out there in the Gulf of Mexico. It has strengthened to a very strong Category 2, just shy of a Category 3 hurricane, and we continue to watch its movement. And we'll be talking more about the movement and the projected path in just a moment. Let's get you situated with the latest now with George. And uh, there you can see uh, centered at 26.6 north, 86.2 west, at 335 miles southeast of New Orleans. Sustained winds of 110 miles per hour. It's moving to the northwest at 10, and the central pressure at 970 millibars. The pressure took a big drop during the afternoon and then has come up slightly since then. As we look at the hurricane uh, watches and warnings that are in effect here, and then you can see uh, also some, not only just hurricane watches, but the tropical storm warnings also within those same areas. But I want you to pay attention anywhere where there is a watch and a warning all along the coast there. Anywhere in that region, you need to be very, very watchful of Georges. We're going to be talking more about uh, the projected path, uh, but we have seen uh, some trends already during the late afternoon and early evening, and we'll be uh, discussing that a little bit uh, more in detail in the upcoming minutes. First, though, we're going to take you down to Biloxi, Mississippi. Our own Jim Cantori is standing by, and Jim, I understand the weather's deteriorating there. Oh, I can't hear Sharon. Jaron, uh, we are here uh, in the middle of a squall, and unfortunately, you know, it's, it's banging on my head here pretty good, so I can't even hear you. But we have uh, very heavy rain coming down right now as a result of the leading edge of Georges, and uh, no doubt conditions are going to go downhill as we go on in through tonight. Now, there are no mandatory evacuations in uh, Biloxi, but amazingly enough, a lot of people have taken this very, very seriously. They've boarded up. The businesses are closed as of 8 o'clock tonight, local time, and no one should really be on this side of US-90, which is where I am on the beach, uh, right next to Treasure Bay, one of the casinos. I have with me uh, Chief Frankie Dugan, and he is the uh, Director of the Emergency Management here, and we appreciate you coming out here, sir. Give no us problem. an idea of how you feel Biloxi is prepared for the storm. Well, we are prepared real early on. There was boats already moving out of, out of harbor during the middle of the week. People started evacuation plans very early. And like you say, we do have one mandatory evacuation, everything right. south of 90. But other than that, people have boarded up. They're moving out. Uh, they remember Camille. Is that, what, is that what they're comparing this to, yes. trying to get Camille? Yes, it, she's kind of taking start of the same track as Camille. She's not as big as Camille, but she's scared. We, we are very scared of big storms like this. Now, I talked to your public information officer earlier on, and, and she had said that she has been receiving a lot of phone calls from people that have, have moved down here from the north, and they're, they don't really quite know what to do. Right, and we have been doing a lot of education all along. We knew that right. that would happen, and of course they can call us at the Bluxy Civil Defense or the Harrison County Civil Defense. We'll be glad to work with them. We can tell them if you've got a place to evacuate to, go immediately. Chief Dugan, we have that number up right now. You can see it, 228-435-6143. Uh, I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. I think I said 6134 last time. It is 6143. Is that correct, sir? That's, that's correct. That's, that's the correct, correct number. number. So uh, if you have some info, you can get the information that you need on what to do tonight. Exactly correct. We'll be here all night long, that man in the post, and we'll be glad to help anybody. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. You would urge people to complete what they're going to do tonight and batten down the hatches for George. Is that correct? Well, I would hope that if you were going to do it, you would have already done it. As you can see how this wind is gusting right now. And, of course, working in the dark could be a dangerous thing. Uh, right. I hope it's already done. All right, thank you very much, sir. We appreciate you coming out and talking to us. All right. Uh, Sharon, we have a little lightning going on right now, so I'm going to cut this short. But again, as the chief uh, tells us, we are prepared for George. Let's hope it doesn't strengthen any further than it is. Back to you. 
Okay, thank you very much. Jim Cantori reporting live, uh, showing us some of the squally weather there already in Biloxi, Mississippi. Joining me now live is our meteorology supervisor, Stu Ostro. And Stu, uh, obviously already getting some effects of this as we head toward the Florida Panhandle and on out west toward Mississippi. What sort of trends have you seen watching this uh, during the late afternoon, early evening? What has not changed is that we still have a serious situation, a very dangerous hurricane that's teetering on the edge of Category 3 in the Sapphire Simpson scale, which is what we define as a major hurricane. Uh, we have been looking very closely at the short-term trends. One of them that we saw a little earlier this evening was a bit of a jog to the north, and that seems to have smoothed itself out. It seems to have been a temporary wobble, generally moving toward the northwest. Uh, the other thing that we've uh, seen very recently is a uh, report from the Hurricane Hunters which shows that the pressure has come up a little bit, a couple of millibars. Now, what does that tell us? On the one hand, it means that at least in the very short term, we're not seeing explosive intensification, which when we saw the drop of seven millibars a little earlier is something that you have to really be concerned about. On the other hand, the fact that it's come up a little doesn't mean that it's weakening either. Uh, that earlier drop is a sign that it's at least trying to intensify and that potential for further intensification does still exist. All right. Uh, we were talking, too, about uh, the tropical storm force winds, the hurricane force winds. At what point do you think that that might become more of a factor for some of these folks along the coast? Well, in some of these outer squalls, even though uh, they're outside the area of sustained tropical storm force winds of 39 miles per hour or higher, some of these outer squalls have had some gusts to uh, tropical storm force. The sustained winds will come a little closer as we get toward the morning, and the hurricane force winds extend out 115 miles uh, away from the center of circulation, particularly to the uh, north and northeast and east-northeast. And so as this moves along, the hurricane warning area could see hurricane force winds, at least in gusts, later on Sunday. And that also reinforces the idea that while we do need to be very concerned as to exactly where the center of circulation reaches the coast, because that determines what the storm surge is and where it is, what it is, we don't only want to focus on the center of circulation because those hurricane force winds and rough seas and storm surge and rainfall, uh, heavy rainfall and potential rainfall induced flooding all extend out a good distance. This from is the a very big storm. When you look at a satellite picture, it covers a good chunk of the Gulf of Mexico, and you can even see the expanse of the rain bands that have been moving on out. Uh, let me zoom in a little closer, and we'll get a view for some of the heavier rain that's been falling all the way from Pensacola, as you can see, out to, toward uh, Biloxi. This is not a tiny little hurricane. Uh, the center of circulation off the edge of this, down in that direction, some of these outer squalls already coming on shore, and as we saw with uh, Jim Cantori a couple minutes ago, they do contain some heavy rain, uh, maybe even a little lightning, and those gusty winds. And we are concerned about the, the gusty winds in these, and also, more importantly, the sustained winds of gale force, which is tropical storm force or higher, because it gets very hard, if not impossible, for example, to put up hurricane shutters when that strong wind is trying to blow it out. Folks really hand. should have what they need to be done done at very this quickly, point. Yes. Okay. Strike probability. This is uh, the million dollar question now, and we have seen some different trends uh, just in the past few hours. Explain that. Well, as we uh, alluded to a minute ago, there had been a little more of a north or north northwest uh, jog we think that that was just a temporary wobble and it's moving more in this direction, but that just goes to show you that anybody in this uh, area here needs to batten down. As Hurricane George targets the Gulf Coast, we're on the scene and behind the scenes tracking its path. Rely on the experts. Watch Weather Center on the hour and half hour. Man's basic desire is to be free. He will break loose his chains. He will decimate his enemies. From director Steven Spielberg, a shattering drama comes into your home on pay-per-view. Morgan Freeman, Anthony Hopkins, Jaiman Hansu, and Matthew McConaughey. Sheer power. Amistad. One of the most powerful films of the year. Easy to order at home on pay-per-view. There aren't too many second chances in life, so HBO's bringing you Second Chance Tuesday. Because how often do you get another shot at something you missed? Like this. Or this. Or even this. Every Saturday on HBO, you're guaranteed a new movie. What you might not know is that you get another crack at it Tuesday night. If you miss Saturday night guarantee, you need Second Chance Tuesday. To order, call Comcast today. 
How can you plan your day when you don't know what the weather is going to be like? I know people like to plan ahead for their day. I can help you out. Right now, it's your local forecast on the Weather Channel. Storm watch at the Weather Channel. Pretty active night of storminess across portions of Michigan. Now on the Empire State, too. We're dealing with some big storms in parts of New York. We'll look at all of this, plus talk tropics. This storm watch begins with a look at the tropical update. This is all being sponsored by the Home Depot. We have uh, not one, but honestly, four hurricanes to talk about. George, Carl, Ivan, and Jean. Let's take them uh, one step at a time. Of course, the one, the most uh, imminent threat to the U.S., actually the only one really with the threat to the U.S., the others will not really have an impact. Hurricane George, still it's a present position. You can see its coordinates here, 27 north, 86.5 west. Presently 305 miles to the southeast of New Orleans with sustained winds around 110 miles per hour. It's moving northwesterly now around 10 miles per hour. And the pressure is at 2864 inches of mercury, 970 millibars. This thing has really had a pretty consistent path after it exited the Cape Verde region, became classified as a tropical storm, then along the way upgraded to a hurricane, crossed the Keys now to its present position. Pretty amazing uh, things have been happening with this storm. There has been a bit of an increase in the strength. Also, it's slowed down just a bit. All the more reason to be very, very watchful. We'll continue to give you a complete update coming up in a few moments at the top of the hour in Weather Center with some expert analysis of what's happening here. But continue to watch because this is really an interesting time to watch this as, again, it has begun to slow down. Any slight change in direction may make a very big difference. So anywhere from Morgan City, Louisiana, on to Panama City, Florida, that darker red there, as you can see from the, uh, the legend there at the top of the screen, indicates places where you do have hurricane warnings in effect. Any kind of preparation you're taking, rush to completion. It's a dangerous time as, again, more rain already moving in here. Hurricane watches from Morgan City, Louisiana, on to Intercoastal City, and from Panama City on toward St. Mark's. A very rough time. Also, tropical storm advisories extend from Panama City on toward, uh, toward St. Mark's. Even though, obviously, this is a very powerful hurricane, still tropical storm force winds can extend out this far. There's a good look at it, what's happening here with the convection. You can see that uh, right there, very evident in the system as it moves towards shore. As far as strike probabilities go, the darker red indicating, again, the most likely areas it will have an impact on. We'll discuss this again further coming up in a few moments in Weather Center at the top of the hour. Here's Hurricane Carl. It's expected to take a map, kind of more of an easterly jaunt, start to accelerate a bit on toward the east. You can see its current position. Winds sustained around 85 miles per hour. Eventually, in the colder water, it should weaken quite a bit. Hurricane Ivan continues to move along. It's a winds around 75 miles per hour, moving uh, east presently. That expected to continue again, should weaken over time. Hurricane Jean, same thing, moving north-northwest, should make more of a northerly turn. It's being impacted a bit by uh, some upper-level conditions. Look at more action here. This is a pretty uh, interesting time of the year to watch the Cape Verde region with still a few waves potentially are moving to affect us. Tonight, the most problematic areas across the northern tier include parts of Michigan also into a New York state now where we have a severe thunderstorm watch in effect. We'll discuss this, plus talk more about Hurricane George next. The Gulf Coast braces for Hurricane George, a dangerous storm that could have a big impact on the Big Easy. For continuous updates, stay with the experts. Watch Weather Center next. This program was sponsored by the Home Depot. We have the how-to clinics uh, where we show the...